Without further ado, I hand it over to Dr. May and Holly. So what I'm going to do tonight, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about wellness, um, but I am going to utilize some of the student body here to help you tonight. And then Dr. May is going to talk about his version of health and wellness and some of his profession as a lens, brain, neurofeedback practitioner. That's pretty well. Um, so I have kind of a format that I was given, so that will lead me on the way. But um, tonight's lecture is about feeling fit, groomed, and fueled. So all those words should mean something to us. My background has become from when I was small. I'm running around this area, actually. Um, running around in the mountains, taking off, playing in the woods, being very, very active. This was before technology hit. Before, um, you know, we used to come in maybe at night, at 9 o'clock, once it got dark out, to watch TV. Sometimes we stay out after dark, under the street lights, and play games and play hide and seek and run around. Um, always running around, always acting, always having fun. And so that kind of developed into a passion and a way of life for me. And so by the time I got to high school, I decided what could be better than playing all day, wearing whatever I want to work, than being with his ed teacher. And I decided when I was about 16 years old that that's what I truly wanted to be. And so throughout you know, school and various jobs, I taught a lot of different athletic, you know, a lot of different athletic venues with age groups from babies. I taught baby swim. And up to elderly people. I went into uh, to some of the nursing homes and taught exercise and dance to people who some couldn't get out of their chairs, but we still had a good time. And we used music. Music is a great motivator. And I think motivation is, is a real key when it comes to taking care of yourself. How did I get here? Well, let's see. I was in the public school systems for a long time, but um, phys ed wasn't so looked upon as one of the top priorities during difficult times, and my job got cut. I was devastated. I figured I'd finish off my life, you know, having a gym named after me or something. Um, but anyway, I spent some time, you know, wandering around, teaching skiing, and doing fun things like that, and then ended up here at CIP, which has actually been kind of something that I've always wanted to do in my life was to become a wellness coordinator. And so my dream came true. And so now I get this opportunity to expand just the physical activities into more of a holistic type of education. So when you think of your health, you think of your body, you think of your mind, and you think of your spirit. And as I mentioned in the open house, we're kind of an umbrella. Wellness is an umbrella that protects you and it carries you from one place to another. Because if you didn't get enough sleep last night, how are you going to function? Well, the next day, you're going to be foggy. We see it all the time with some of the students um, who stay up too late on their computers at night. And they don't get enough sleep. And then they, they're late. So they get up in the morning and they rush out of the door and they don't eat breakfast. And so they have no fuel in their body. And they're trying to sit in their classes and they're trying to focus and they're trying to learn. But they're exhausted from not getting enough sleep and they don't have anything in their bodies to be nourishing their bodies. And so now it becomes even more difficult to concentrate and focus and be at the top of their game. And then they feel like they're not accomplishing a lot. And they could get down in the dumps and feel 
upset. And so the spirit plummets. Then it turns into a vicious cycle if you don't do something about it. So who's going to do something about it? Who? Uh, yourself. Yourself. You have to take the initiative. And that's where the motivation comes in. The wonderful thing about CIP is that, you know, we have this team approach. The, all the different departments here at CIP, the clinicians, the, the residential people, the advisors, the, um, the medical staff, the social thinking teacher, the careers teacher, the advisors, the occupational therapist. Epidemic. Epidemic, thank you. They all are kind of conversing with each other throughout the day, and if a student is having difficulty, we notice. And so when we share information at our team meetings, you know, my antennas go up immediately. What can I do to help the student when they come to my class? How can I help them lead a better life so that they can be more at the top of their game? So that's what my goal is. And I have another assistant, Caitlin, that we all love dearly. Um, and she does a great job as well. What do we work on? Well, we, we kind of are the therapy for the body. So we work on things like relaxation. When we came back from the break, the winter break, you know, everybody was hanging out at home, doing whatever they wanted, didn't have a lot of uh, scheduled time like the CIP. So we started off our first January unit with relaxation and yoga. Um, and our students found out that there's a simple yoga, there's a moderate yoga, and then there's a very strengthening yoga, right? And that was a challenge, the strengthening yoga. It's not, it's not so easy, and it's a good way to get fit. We did a lot of stretching. We found out that a lot of our students are very tight. And guess what, people? If you don't move your body, if you don't stretch, it doesn't go anymore. It stops going. You lose your range of motion. If you never put your arm up in the air, and then you go to put your arm up in the air someday, it isn't going to go. It's going to tighten up. And so we, we are doing a lot of things with flexibility and stretching to keep you moving. Your body is meant to move. You have joints, you have muscles, you have bones. Those were put there for a reason. And then we do a lot of fitness things to keep you fitter and try to improve your fitness so that when you get your job, when you go to your internships, you don't come back after two hours saying, oh, I'm so exhausted, I had to stand on my feet, I had to wash dishes, I had to do this, I had to do that. You, through fitness and through working in your wellness classes, you have expanded your strength and your endurance <coughs> And now you can work. You can put in a good hard day's work and feel good about it and not be exhausted. So there's, it's all interrelated, isn't it? And then we learn to follow directions. We have this great class called Swellness that we put together with Mark and myself. We put social thinking and wellness together so we just call it swellness. And, and we really feel swell when you finish, don't we? Yeah. yeah. And we do a lot of group things. We do a lot of games. We go up to the Lee Elementary School gym. And we have a phys ed class. And those students that are in that swellness class are, they're, they're changing with leaps and bounds. They're learning to get along with each other. They're learning how to sit quiet and listen and take initiative and lead the group sometimes. We, we like to let people lead. Sometimes when I'm up in front of the room and I'm leading a warm-up exercise, I go, okay, it's your turn. And we've got students like Vasha and Victor and Jimmy and lots of people who go up there and they remember the exercises, they remember the moves and they love the music and they like to get up there and they like to put their moves 
to the music, and we follow them. And that makes them feel empowered, and it makes, makes everyone happy. So we have a lot of fun in wellness. And that's stress relieving, isn't it? To come in and have fun, to laugh, and to be active. Because every time we move, we get our heart rate going. We just learned all about our heart rates. We learned how to take a pulse. We learned what our target heart rate is. And we learned how to work towards that target heart rate. That was amazing. Watching, watching the students accomplish that. Knowing whether you're working hard enough or not. By taking your pulse. Oh, your target heart rate is supposed to be 15 and it was only 11. Guess what? You're slacking. You can work harder. You can get fitter. And so following directions is sometimes hard to understand. And giving directions is sometimes hard to do. And keeping that group together. Sometimes we kind of wander off and lose attention and lose focus. But when everything is working well within your system, this system, your body, inside and out, you're able to do these things better. Because if you're lacking in one area, whether it's what you've been eating, what you've been sleeping, you haven't been moving, you kind of been... Or you need to take better care of yourself by hiding, like showering, working Oh, that's another good point, huh? Because sometimes people come to wellness and they say, well, I don't need to shower because I've got wellness. And then they come into wellness in the room and you've got to open the windows. Ew. Really bad. And then they go to their next class, which might be, you know, sitting with their advisor talking about their banking and or they're going to the careers or they're going to an interview. So we have to be prepared in order, you know, we've got restrooms, we're trying to make it an issue that you bring your wellness clothes in a little bag and you change and you get washed up and they look good, smell good, and we all have a good time. So that's important because, you know, we don't want to be, have people running away from us <coughs> when we don't smell so good. What else do we do? We do gross motor, we do fine motor, we do weightlifting, we try to get our energy up. The people that come in first thing in the morning are like, oh, they're half alive. Why well, we go speed walking? We go speed walking. We just started that. We try to have laughter. Um, we do stations. We do party stations, yep. Yeah. If you're not maintaining a healthy lifestyle, that means that you're probably <coughs> low on fuel. You're not running at optimal speed. Your fuel tank is empty. How can you? How can you think? How can you walk? How can you work? How can you focus? I just wanted to say that when you and Nathan, I learned the best two words to eat before your workout. Like, are there any good things before your workout? I agree with your work with a little bit of granola in it. You're doing great. Or, like, a, a peanut butter is good fuel, too. Yeah. So we're trying to get students to pack something with them throughout the day because they do have a busy day. So put a, put a granola bar in your backpack or put a piece of fruit. Don't go hungry. Don't forget to drink. You've got to hydrate. Signs of dehydration are confusion, headaches. You, know, you just don't feel good when you're dehydrated. And by the time you feel thirsty, you're already dehydrated. Yeah. You've got to be drinking. That's why, you know, the minute you come to wellness, you get you right in. Did you get a drink? And, and we hope that the, that the other staff yeah, do the another same. Way, another way to find is uh, if you go to the bathroom and it's like a neon color, that means you're not drinking enough water. Right? Yes. That's so now I have some success stories that I want to share with you before I turn this over to Dr. May, who's going to talk a bit about his version of health and wellness, and he's going to share a little bit about the lens therapy. Um, so I have some questions. Well, let's 
let's see. Kyle. Who's Kyle? Kyle, what benefits have you noticed from coming to wellness since you began here? Can you share that with us? Since coming to wellness, benefits I have noticed have been increased stamina, increased strength, increased uh, heart rate from working hard. <clears throat> Holly's class as of recently just did circuits where we learned heart rate check and I was able to see how well I was working hard based on how fast my pulse was after six seconds, multiply by the, that by 10 and I would get my heart rate. And as of recently, we have just started doing speed walking, and in class, we will climb Roller Coaster Hill, which is over by the high school, and Dublin Hill, which is just down the road from High Street. And we will climb up those hills, and each week we will try to see if we can improve on that time. For instance, one day we might do Roller Coaster Hill, and the time might be 35 minutes. The next class I have, let's see if we can get that down to maybe 30 minutes. Might be a little extreme, but with a little effort, we could do it. Okay. Also, coming from a coaching background myself, I used to be a tennis coach and a ski coach, and so I do push. I do push the students, and I, and I hope they understand that I'm pushing them for their own good. Um, Sometimes we just need a little encouragement to work a little harder and improve. Um, the next question is, why do you think you need wellness in your life? <coughs> Jimmy. Wellness is like um, the sunshine over my head. To be honest, uh, when I started wellness, um, I actually didn't think I need it because I um, have enough energy as it is and I have a perfect body weight. But after doing more wellness and learning that there's more aspects to wellness, I found out that it's actually helping me um, get, um, keep, maintain that energy and also help me um, learn way, other ways and other activities of how to control uh, my um, hyperactivity. So. And your focus too, right? Mm -hmm. okay. The biggest obstacle you have conquered since attending wellness sessions. Let's see, Basha. Biggest um, obstacle I would have to say would have been um, doing. Um, yoga and meditation when we did that. Also, um, when we did the circuits, when we did um, sit-ups, push-ups, those things, um, and pretty much all of the hard um, exercises that you made us do, but in the long run, it was worth it, because I do feel a lot better, like health-wise. And you improved. And I improved, yeah. Thank you. Um, I learned to have a better attitude. You did. And I can vouch for that. Because when I first started, I was just kind of in a bad mood. I was tired and I had a hard time with getting good in our team. And I learned that, you know, it takes a lot of practice. Yes. Practice, practice. And it takes time. Little steps, baby steps. What have you learned since attending wellness at CIP, Victor? Well, I've not just learned it at CIP, but I can also do wellness at my home or at my apartment. I can do it anywhere, in fact, and I have, I have my own time. I've learned I can do that stuff in the future as well, and I'll be able to live longer, is all I have to say. Tell us what you've accomplished. Well, um, since I've uh, since I've exercised a lot outside of CIP, I've lost around thirteen point two pounds. And how much around your waist? Uh, 50. 50. 
50 or 51? Four inches, right? Four inches, yes. Four inches, not just waist. Yeah, right. every month when we get to the last week of the month, we take weight, take measurement, and calculate what we need to price and all the food we ate and your gender and stuff. And you can weigh yourself. The other thing I look at is something called ergonomics. 
and that has to do with how people use tools, how they use snow trains, whether they're using it correctly, leading to back pain, or how they do their job, so I can train them correctly how to do the job so that they not only do not have pain while they're working, but hopefully they can retire and not have a lifetime of pain because of what they did when they were working. In addition to that, I'm a lens neurofeedback practitioner. And what that is, I'll go into a little bit more later, but lens is an acronym. What it means, lens, L-E-N-S, stands for Low Energy Neurofeedback System. And as I said, I'll go into that a little bit more later. But what I'm doing with that basically is working with people with a broad spectrum of what are labeled dysfunctional <coughs> symptoms that include anything from ADD, ADHD, to anxiety, depression, Tourette syndrome, obsessive compulsive behavior. Could they have an Asperger's? I'm a little hard here. Could they have Asperger's? And yes, and Could also. Could they have Down syndrome? Well, here's the deal. The deal is with the lens, as I said, I'll talk a little bit more later. I'm not treating a specific diagnosis, I'm treating a brain. And we all have one of those. And to a certain degree, we all have spectral disorders of different degrees. And so the lens can help with a whole variety of those things. What I want to start off with is to reinforce a lot of what Holly said. And it sounds like you guys already know a lot. So the primary thing that I would like to impress upon you is this. Wellness is not a class. It's not a class that you take and a class that you finish. It's not a class that you learn something and then you put it aside on the shelf and forget about it. Wellness is a lifetime, lifestyle commitment. And if you make that commitment to wellness, you can see how fit the biggest demonstration of health is sitting right over there. You can see how fit and healthy Holly is compared to looking at your average adult of a similar age. And you can see how fit and healthy I am for my age because I take care of myself. And the question is, is what do you want to feel like? How do you want to be when you're old like me? Do you want to be walking around in pain? No, and you want to have good So, we are here today to talk about my passion and why my life work, which is health, health and wellness. I, I do this every day. I deal with patients every single day, trying to educate them as to exactly what health and wellness is, health and wellness are. So what I'd like to do is ask you, how many times in a day, or in a week, or in a month, or in a year, does your average person give any thought whatsoever to the behind the scenes workings of how the body operates and functions 24 7, sleeping or awake, what your body is doing to keep you alive on a daily basis. Most people don't give it any thought at all. It's miraculous. I am in love with the human body. It is the most miraculous of all things. And the more you know about it, the more amazing it becomes. So, think about it. When a sperm meets an egg, we have a single cell. That single cell divides a gazillion times and become specialized cells that become organs. And those organs organize into organ systems. And at the end of a mere nine months, that one cell comes out of baby. And it becomes you. A human being. Becomes a baby human being. But it's equally impressive for an elephant. And how the difference of two between, between the two is amazing also. But in a mere nine months, you ever think about what happens inside your brain? In a mere nine months from conception to birth, your brain has a trillion glial cells, over a hundred billion neurons or nerve cells that make over 500 trillion connections. And the chance for things to go wrong is so astronomical, and how rarely it goes wrong is absolutely astounding and amazing. And yet most people don't give the function of their body much thought, let alone any care. And in my 25 years as a chiropractor, I don't know what, by, so speak up. what do you mean by goes wrong, exactly? So what do you mean by goes wrong? By what? Goes, goes wrong? wrong? Well, how connections cannot be made correctly. I mean, think about 500 trillion connections, how connections could miss, okay? It's fascinating. How does the nerve from your brain get down to your big toe while it's growing? I mean, how does it know to go there? And when you find out that there are things called growth cones, which are actually almost like sniffing their way through your body, and they get repelled in certain directions until it makes it from your brain to your big toe. It's like, say, what? Holy 
account. The chance for things to go wrong are amazing to not make the right connection so that the person functions correctly. Okay? So in 25 years as a chiropractor and trying to teach health to patients, the most distressing things that I have observed are that we are being misled. We are being misled to believe that health is something that is so technical and hard to understand that it should be left, it's best left in the hands of specialists called doctors. <coughs> And the other thing that I've learned that is truly distressing is how people take this miracle for granted. And most people are using their bodies strictly as a vehicle to get them from class to class, from here to work, from here to the mall, something to put some clothes on. And it's the most amazing miracle you can possibly ever imagine. Which brings me to the questions that I gave you and are for your eyes only. You don't have to answer these questions. I just wanted everybody to think about it. Look at all right, there we go. So, first question. What is the most important and valuable thing that you own? Anybody want to volunteer? How about I say my guitar? His guitar. My body. My car. My car. My life. My life? Yeah. My iPad. My iPad, my, my all right. <laughs> my iPod? My iPod, okay. <laughs> all right. My computer. My computer. My piano keyboard. Piano keyboard. Good. Friends and family. Okay. Friends and family. Very important. Me. My homework. My what? My homework. Okay. Okay. So the reason for that question is pretty simple, and there is no basic right or wrong answer. Okay. So it's not as if you're wrong. But when I ask people the most important thing that they own. The most common question I get is actually a possession. The most common answer I get is actually a possession. The most important thing that you could possibly ever own is your life, your body, and your health. Because without those things, none of the other things can really <coughs> be an important part of your life. Who is your family? Your family, are. your family is very important. But I like to tell patients, if you don't put your health first as your top priority, at some point, everything else will be second. If you're a mother, and you are not healthy, it becomes harder to take care of your kids. So mothers have a hard time reconciling the fact that I'm telling them that their health is more important than their kids because you can't be a good mother if your health is suffering. So the number one most important thing in your life should be your health. Okay, the second question, who's your primary care provider? Any answers? My physician, Dr. Glenn Beck. Um, I have okay. sweet, my, uh, um, my parents, uh, I have Holly and I have Weight Watchers. My uh, dad's daughter, Kate and Holly. Okay, so again, you're not wrong. I'm not embarrassed you. Your answers are typical of most people. When I ask people who their primary care provider is, you. You got it. You got it. Okay? Again, we are being misled. Even the languaging of it is training us to believe, as I said before, that health is too complicated for us and it should be left in the hands of other people called specialists, called doctors. Remember this, there is no such thing as a primary care provider outside of yourself. Everybody, including me as a chiropractor, is secondary. The things that you do every day will determine whether or not you will be healthy. Your health absolutely does not come to you from doctors, from drugs, nurses, from hospitals, from procedures, from surgeries and tests. We have more of those things in this country than we've ever had before, and we are sicker than we have ever been. That's true, but sometimes those things kind of really help people. That's exactly correct. I learned that you have to get if you don't feel you know, well, it's important to get kids to be because when I came here, I stopped <coughs> Well, that is, that is exactly correct. When you are in a distressed state, sometimes your body needs to assist. When you break a bone, the setting of a bone is a wonderful thing. But don't ever forget this. The doctor may have set the bone, but the only thing that ever heals you is you. The only thing that ever fixes you is you. Even if you take medication, the only thing that ever fixes you is you. So sometimes we need an assist. My suggestion is, is that if you stay healthy, 
you need very few assists. That's exactly what my teachers in my school said is um, the meds can help you, but you, you have to set your mind that, that you want to help too. Excellent. So again, the only thing that ever fixes you is you. So the next question, what health plan do you have? Any volunteers? I'm on my Watching and learning what I eat. Blue cross blue field. All right, so again, your question, your answers are typical. You are not wrong. This isn't about embarrassing you at all. This is what I get from 100% of my patients. Here I am talking about health as I do to them. And I ask you what health plan you have. This is to drive in how brainwashed you are to believe that health comes anywhere but from us. I ask what health plan you have, and everybody names an insurance carrier, <laughs> as opposed to the things that you're going to do every day to maintain and improve and nurture your own health. It is brainwashing and nothing less. Okay? Primary care provider, doctor, health plan, which are associated. All right? This is it's incredibly typical. Uh, you are not answering any different than my patients do every single day. So I appreciate your, your playing along. Okay, I'm not trying to fool you, I'm just trying to make it work. All right, here's what I ask my patients all the time. All right, you want to be sick or you want to be healthy? All day. All day. Healthy. 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 I ever hear anybody tell me, I want to be sick? Probably not. Okay, both. You want to be both? <laughs> here's one. What are you? Me, I don't want to go, so I told my body that that's where I want to be sick and I got sick. Well, wait, that's how important your mind is in deciding whether or not you want to be healthy or sick. So, the point of that question is, do you think anybody ever tells me they want to be sick and they're not being a wise guy? I don't think so. Alright, next question. On a scale of 0 to 10, with 0 being not at all, and 10 being the most important thing you value in the universe, how much do you value your health? 10. 10. 9. 10. 9. 5. Health is a way to take the life that you live. Excellent. 
I just say it's part of our everyday life where we move around, we be social, and we face that. These are all excellent definitions. One more. Uh, the generic condition of the body or mind with reference to soundness and vigor. All right. We do all the time. That's fine. Look at that. The truth of the matter is, while those are all excellent definitions, everything that you all said are the end results of being healthy, and none of them actually define health. Health is actually a lifetime lifestyle commitment. The most beautiful thing I can tell somebody, the most optimistic and uplifting thing, is you are genetically DNA programmed and hardwired to be healthy. You do not get healthy, you become sick. You become sick of the choices that you make in your life, and you stay healthy because of the choices that you make, and how you choose to think, what kind of thoughts go through your head, okay? How you choose to eat, what you are putting in your face, and how you choose to use your body in terms of exercise. So everything that you are learning in college class is outstanding. The answers that you gave were incredible. The progress that you're seeing, you will, oh, I'm going to make you a guarantee. No, no one out of the doctor will ever make it. If you do everything that your body needs to be healthy, it will absolutely make you healthier than you are. Absolutely 100% of the time. So one last thing on health, and then I'll move on. I like to go through something that I call the green thumb analogy with my patients. Anybody here know what it means to have a green thumb? Uh, no blood. Good with, good with botany and plants. Good with growing plants. Is it rocket science growing a plant? Sometimes. No. <laughs> 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 okay. That's not real rocket science. Green water. All right. It's water. It's it needs water. It needs sun. It needs what else? A plant. It's carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. What else? Food. 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 All right, so you've got them all, let me sum it up. It needs water, it needs sunlight, it needs nutrient-rich soil, it needs carbon dioxide, it needs those four things, but we have to qualify those four things because you can give a plant too much water or too little water, right? You can give it too much sunlight or too little sunlight, correct? All right, somebody can be pouring a motor oil in the soil, so we better change the soil and make sure it's nutrient-rich, and in terms of carbon dioxide, it'll do better growing in the forest than it will by the highway. If you give a plant those four ingredients, what's that plant going to do? It's going to do beyond grow. It's going to, you said it over there, it's going to thrive, right? Question, why is that plant going to thrive? Because it's taking good care of it. Okay, anyone else? It's being very healthy and getting all the nutrients it needs. Okay, you're all touching on it, but the real answer is, is because the plant is genetically programmed to thrive if it gets everything it needs in a pure and sufficient form, just like you. And what happens if you give a plant or deny it or make one of those nutrients less? It dies. It will die. It'll do something less than thrive, just like you. So health is a matter of paying attention to the nutrients that your body needs. So let's see. If I have a plant that is wilting and it's not doing well, what are we going to do with it? Or, uh, we're going to give it a nutrient. I'm a human being that's sick. What are we going to give it? Take care of it. We're going to give it a drug. What? Right? That's what we do. You got a plant that's sick, you give it a nutrient. You have a human that's sick, you give it a drug. In reality, when you have a human that's sick, you give it a nutrient. It'll One last thing. Okay, Jason? Jason's my volunteer. Anybody have any idea what this is? Yes. Yes. This is, we have no way of knowing because I made it up. Okay? This is my health list. This is your health. If you remember nothing of what we spoke about, remember this. Jason, on the magic list. We already tested Jason, Jason for balance. It's unbelievable. All right. What's Jason's body doing right now? Trying to, Trying to balance. That's the definition of health right there. Balance. It's called homeostasis. Your body gets in a state of balance. So anytime that Jason eats junk food, okay, or smokes a cigarette, Okay? Or does not exercise, what happens? Oh, it gets hard to balance. And at some point, if you do those things too much, your body, <laughs> your body gets thrown off and you can't stay in balance anymore. And guess what? You become sick. If you remember nothing about my talk, remember that your body is always going to keep you alive. Health is its most basic survival mechanism. You are hardwired to be healthy. You do not get healthy. You become sick because of the choices and exposures that you have. If you do things correctly, it will always, invariably, 100% of the time, make you healthier than you are now.
With that said, we're going to move on to the neurofeedback. All right, we're going to move on to the lens neurofeedback. I've been a chiropractor, as I said, for 25 years, and pretty much I've been working with patients from here down, okay? Treating all kinds of aches and pains, from headache to neck pain, to things that patients call pinched nerves, sciatica, to elbows, joints, whatever. All kinds of body aches and pain. The lens has given me an opportunity to work from here up. Because there isn't a chiropractic patient in the last 25 years that I've seen that doesn't have some sort of problem here that's either primary to their pain, meaning causing it, like anxiety or stress, or secondary to their pain, meaning they have so much pain, now they got a problem over here, okay? As a lens neurofeedback practitioner, I work with, as I said earlier, what are called dysfunctional brain syndromes. And guess what? We all have them to different degrees on different days. We all have biorhythms where they may come and go in our lives. I was telling Holly today, I own this lens thing. I don't remember the last time I used it to give myself a tuna. I woke up today, I knew I was giving a talk. I was a little foggy and maybe not a little happy today. I lens myself. Actually, when I give it to myself, I actually call it cleanse. So what lens is, it's a low energy neurofeedback system. It is basically sophisticated technology and it's also sophisticated software. Basically what we're doing is we have technology and software, we hook the patient up, we have a ground and a reference on each ear, and we have an active sensor that we pass around the head one site at a time for 21 sites performing a standard neurological EEG, an electroencephalogram, and we're capturing your dominant brainwave, and these are bi-directional leads and sensors, so we're sending this little tiny infinitesimal electromagnetic radio wave signal, which is thousands of times less than this. Patients don't do, take, or feel anything. I can't think of anything more American than that. Okay? You don't do, take, or feel anything. Other forms of neural and biofeedback are training processes. And you are either sitting in front of a computer and learning how to control Pac-Man to achieve certain brainwave, uh, brainwave patterns. And those things take time. This lens is such incredible technology that I am more often than not, in fact, I tell people that are asking me about it, I see progress in less than six visits. And if you're not making some progress within six visits, the chance of it helping decline. It doesn't disappear. In my personal practice, because I want to make sure that we try to help everybody, if it's not helping in six visits, straight out, the chance of it helping decline. But if people wanted to try to go further and they saw no progress, I will lower my fee or whatever you feel like paying to literally buy you more time to see if it can help. Because the goal is to get people better. That's the goal. Okay, so what exactly is it doing? We don't exactly know. I can tell you, but you have to remember this. Only 4% of all the medicine is supported by the kind of scientific evidence that they want everybody else to know. So if I say we don't really know, they don't really know 96% of what they're doing. All right? What I believe is happening is a couple things. Number one, I, think, I feel that the guy that created this, who I trained with, Len Oaks, and this technology, by the way, has been around since 1992, has somehow figured out how to speak to the brain in its own electromagnetic language and nudge it out of maladaptive patterns that it's stuck in. As I said just moments ago, your body's wired for homeostasis, but sometimes it can get stuck. Remember we said sometimes it needs an assist? What the lens seems to do, what that little Electromagnetic signal seems to do is come along and nudge it out of maladaptive patterns, and the pull being back to balance, homeostasis, is dramatic and is quick. How do I know it's working? On every single visit, for every single patient, okay? And if anyone else is in the room, a significant other or parent or whatever, I hand that patient a blank piece of paper and a pen, and if it's okay with them, I hand it to their parent. If it's boyfriend or girlfriend, it's okay, I hand it to them, and I have everybody write down, here are my instructions, write down if you notice anything different as a result of last week, and if you didn't notice anything, write no change. You want to talk about research? I may have never seen any better research than this. This isn't corporate sponsored for my benefit research. This is patients in their own handwriting documenting unbelievable changes in their life. I have a young, young six-year-old girl I'm treating with cerebral palsy. The parents ask me if I could help her. I take my standard answer, I don't know. We'll see. You know? And the changes are just blowing me away. This kid can now sit up straight without a harness. Actually, the parents gave me a picture. All right, so 
Here are the problems. First of all, you have to understand, I'm not treating diagnosis. I'm not treating cerebral palsy, and parents know that. So what are we treating? We're treating strength and motor control, stamina and energy, speech and focus and vision problems, okay? In one treatment, okay, her first week of fun, she's able to sit up better, better without her harness, and she sits up straight, and she can sit on my lap without leaning against me. She's raising her arms over, over her head. She's trying to feed herself in school. She took off her glasses for the first time in her life. Her mother said the fact that she did it was amazing, but when she realized she could do it, it was awesome. Here's this girl now sitting on a couch, reading with her father without a harness or anything. All right? This is the kind of results that I fairly routinely see. I have kids in here. I treat My biggest demographic are people about your age, OK? Maybe 15, 16 years old. I'm pretty active. I just started a four-year-old the other day. And the biggest issue that I treat, because it's an incredibly big diagnosis, is ADD, ADHD. I'm working with a lot of kids with all kinds of issues with that, problems focusing, all right, and kinds of anger issues. Uh, I have kids with Tourette's in there, one of the more amazing ones I've ever seen. This is a 15-year-old kid. If you know what Tourette's is, they have facial, facial tics. This kid has severe facial tics. He has short fuse, explosiveness, frustration, and lack of focus, eye blinking, whistle blowing, mouth twitching. In five visits, okay, eye blinking and mouth twitching is 99% non-existent. Experience and outlook have improved dramatically. There is hope. His compulsive reactions have also decreased to better self-control. That's in five visits. He has 15 years of um, medication, okay? It's a very interesting story to me. His younger brother, okay, so that kid was uh, three years ago. His younger brother came in. His older brother was one of my first patients. His younger brother, a, a year ago, right about now, got into the <coughs> baseball. And subsequent to that, his eyes were darting back and forth in his head and rolling up in his head. His parents brought him to see me because I had helped his brother. And I said, he needs a neurological work. He may have a belief that something may be going on. So they appropriately went to a pediatric neurologist. And then they were in the medical grass. Pediatric neurologist, they didn't find anything wrong with him, but it took eight months for his parents to get the kid back to me, and it came back to me because he requested, the kid requested it on his 10th birthday, and this past December, he asked his parents if I could be his birthday present to fix him as I fixed his brother, and in four treatments, uh, uh, fourth week has gone great again. He's feeling remarkably better. We were amazed that after just four treatments, the results he has had. By the time he came to see me, not only with eyes going back and forth and up in his head, he was, he was doing this with about this frequency. He doesn't do this at all anymore. Now his eye he does a little bit of blinking when he's under stress. And the other great thing was, when the family came in, I got to see his older brother for the first time in two years, and still no ticks. Uh, Len is one of the most, I, I, I love chiropractic. I think chiropractic is amazing. And if people would listen to the advice and things that I try to teach them about health and change their lives, uh, it would be fantastic. I'm basically used as an expensive painkiller. Uh, I really like Lens because it's creating the kind of change in people's lives that I would love to see. I have about a 75 to 80 percent success rate. As I said, I'm seeing incredible progress within six visits most of the time. I can't predict who it will help and who it won't help. Uh, I had a case uh, March 18th. A guy came into my office, he's had lifetime anger issues and behavioral outbursts several times a day forever, okay? He's 26 years old. Uh, he and his wife came in. She is uh, morbidly obese, meaning overweight and pregnant. They both looked extremely unhealthy, so I started giving my little health talk and examining and telling patients that lens doesn't give you a new brain, it can only help optimize the one that you have as supported by a healthy lifestyle. And I started to talk about some food to them. They got angry at me. They said that they didn't come here to hear about food, that they just came from the lens. I'm uh, thinking to myself, that's like going to a doctor and having to listen to your heart and find a liver problem. He says, and you say, like, I don't want to hear about the liver. You know? uh, I didn't go there with them. I proceeded to do the lens. I typically target seven sites. There are 21 sites. I typically target seven sites, but I tell everybody it's not about how many sites we do. After just two sites, he started to get lightheaded. As I said, most people don't experience anything. He was getting lightheaded, so the two sites I stopped. I figured we're on our way out because they got mad at me and we only did two sites and they probably thought they didn't get their money's worth and I would never see him again. I didn't hear from him for two and a half weeks. Uh, a week ago, he came back in and what he wrote down was he hasn't had an anger outburst since his treatment. He came in again today and he hasn't had an anger outburst since. And he's still even out of outburst. <laughs> I have a question.
question. Uh, you have a, a, a you, in North Adams, but do you do people have to go to you, or can you come to them, or? Well, people come to me. But I can come to them. That, you know, I mean, if, if, if there were a, what I tell people, because I have, I have a woman that drives from Montpelier to see me in North Adams, that's three hours away. That girl with the cerebral palsy, they come from Deerfield, North Adams, that's on an hour each way. I've had people come to me from Bridgeton and from Troy. When you have something that really works and is successful, but I also tell those people that if you've got a group of people in your area, I'll come there. But for me to go for one, I have an office in Lenox, too. Oh, okay. But I'm here on Tuesdays. All right. You know, I'm in Lenox on Tuesdays. Okay, and Tuesdays only in the moment, but I hope we expand to Thursdays. So, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. All right, the last thing is, is I've been holding this, I forgot to tell you what this is. Don't you guess, because you know, don't you guess, because you know. <laughs> What is this? Spine. What? Spine? No. Okay. This is my magic wand. Oh. <laughs> this is for patients. I got so tired of telling patients that I don't have a magic wand, so I made. Okay? This is for those patients who come in and I give them an idea of the kind of things that they need to do to be healthy, and they go, Well, I ain't doing that. I'm like, Oh. You want the magic wand. <laughs> and I pull out the magic wand and I wave it over a couple times and I go, come back and let me know how that works.